I'm setting up my nine front home grid, and what makes a grid a grid is that it's a network of computers. Network configuration in Plan 9 is done through the Network Database, or NDB for short. NDB is both a collection of files, a collection of programs that work with those files. Several of those programs are also exposed as files, so it's a kind of file system. And it is also a library to, you know, have with functions to read and manipulate the uh, database. First off, the files. So if you've done the basic, like built a basic grid with a file and auth server and a terminal, uh, you'll have to mess with NDB local. So the files in here are in lib NDB. There are several of them, uh, but local will uh, reference the other ones here. So oftentimes you just need to read lib NDB local and you'll also be pulling in these other files. Um, common uh, contains a lot of just basic networking stuff. Uh, you'll see things like, you know, your basic services with their port numbers associated with them. So it knows that HTTP is port 80, FTP is 21, that sort of thing. Um, it also references uh, DNS challenge, which is for Acme DNS stuff. Um, it also references a net, um, net NDB. So that's a file sort of generated when you do uh, your basic network setup. So I'm go to net. I can see here I have a local NDB file. I can cat it. And it has just sort of the stuff that's put in there when the uh, system is booted up and configured. Oops, wrong one. So in the termrc and cprc scripts, uh, both start up the uh, connection server pretty early. You can see here it grabs it just so it can get the name. Um, it'll then run the IP config stuff. Um, and this will just set it up on the default ethernet device found in uh, slash net. And uh, in the cprc script in particular, it will go down and uh, sort of query the database to see if this machine is an auth server or not. Uh, if it is, it'll start up the auth listeners, um, and if not, just the standard listeners. So how should one go about editing NDB local? Uh, the NDB entry uh, for this is in section six of the man pages. It'll list various keys that are uh, used by the system. So like sys here is used for system names. Ether is used for MAC addresses, IP for IP addresses. Um, up here you can see this first one here is to basically anytime you want to authenticate with this grid here called home grid, it will let you know what the uh, server is that runs the authentication. So you'll need to enter something like this if you ever want to log into a, an outside grid of some sort, you'll need to know what's its authentication domain and what server. Um, this IP net is a configuration for this particular local network. It'll have the gateway, what DNS I should use, you know, the auth server for here, file server, TFTP, I use that for pixie booting. Uh, I did a previous video where I explained how I set up a Raspberry Pi as a server with the GPS unit to serve time. And if I set it as the default NTP server for my grid, um, all the computers in the grid will call that computer to get time. Um, so like down here, I have some other ones and all these things, I run a DHCP server too, uh, off central, and it will check if a various Mac addresses call in, it will hand them that IP address. Like these ones down here are actually for whiz light bulbs. They, these are not devices running nine front at all, but it will still respect that if they call in with this uh, MAC address, they'll be handled uh, that IP address. Um, so another interesting thing is that um, there are some, you know, known uh, sort of key uh, keys for the system. You can add your own. So in my case, I want to, I have a separate program that, you know, looks for anything called 
any key called whiz and checks if it has a value called bulb and makes a file system based on that. So um, actually it should show how that works. So the various programs that use NDB local use this NDB library here. This is explained in section two of the manual. Um, and it has functions to open, parse, and search through uh, the network database file. And an example I have here is my WizBulb program. Look for NDB open. So here we have this NDB open. Since it has like, I'm not passing any arguments, it'll default to open up the, uh, the default um, NDB, which is lib NDB local. Um, it then goes through this loop here. Pull that out. And it's gonna go through and search for anything with whiz equals bulb. So it's gonna set that up for this tuple here. Um, it'll continue to go through the loop <clears throat> until there's no more entries. And to increment it, it's going to use next to look for the next one that has wib or whiz equals bulb. Um, so these things will tend to key off the first thing in there. So the first entry actually will be, um, you know, the system name for the thing. So it's going to pull that value out as the system name um, and then create a file with that system name. And the effect is, is I end up with a directory full of the names of all the bulbs that are listed in NDB local. And then when I'm done, I can also close the file there. When I want to call the bulb, I'll use the dial command, or dial function. And it's going to make a, a suitable address with the bulb name that comes in just same as the file name. Um, so I don't need to give dial the, the address of the bulb. I do need to give it like the protocol I'm using in the port, but it's going to um, use dial here and dial is going to um, contact the connection server and the connection server exposes itself as a file in slash net or net.alt if you're using an alternative networking stack. And in Plan 9 style, it just opens it as a file um, and reads and writes to it to translate a, you know, a system name back into an IP address to uh, call something. Anyway, a key difference between Unix and Plan 9 is that Plan 9 was designed from the ground up to be a networked system. Uh, the network setup is well thought out and built deeply into the system. Not only are the default tools and options very good at doing their job, but they also include a lot. Uh, you can include those things in your own projects too. So it makes it easy to make any kind of program a network oriented program. Uh, I hope this is informative. Uh, check the description down below for links to the man pages. And as always, have fun.